And now to our speakers. We will lead off with Brock McDonald, CEO of the Recycling Council of BC. As CEO for the Recycling Council of BC, Brock leads the organization's efforts to assist governments and industry in, implementing, in the implementation of extender producer responsibility programs and other waste prevention initiatives aimed at developing a zero waste based closed loose economy. Brock also represents RCBC on the National Zero Waste Council and chairs a circular economy working group. A former educator and award-winning print and broadcast journalist, Brock worked for the Product Care Association prior to joining RCBC. Brock, over to you. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. Oh, can you hand me the, the magic wand there? Okay, there we go. Good, thanks. Um, experience and perspective, uh, Malcolm Brody said, I was going to share. Well, I'm going to share a little bit more of perspective than I am experience. So I wanted to start off with uh, what RCBC's vision is, and it's a world without waste. And so that's a pretty daunting task. How do we get there? Well, we kind of looked at this and went, we have to look at this as a systems approach. How many people here know what a systems thinking approach is? Oh, great, well, lots of you, good. Well, a systems thinking approach looks at everything in its entirety, a system in its entirety, because what happens in one part of the system can affect other parts of the system, and you can end up with unintended consequences, which can be sometimes positive, but oftentimes negative. And one of those negative consequences of a linear economy is waste. And what we've concluded is that waste is a symptom of poor design. If you were designing products at the beginning of this process, you wouldn't have waste. So it's, it's a systems problem, not necessarily uh, any other kind. Uh, it's a faulty design. So we have to look at this as a system solution then. Uh, simply ramping up uh, recycling is looking at things in isolation. And you can't do that. You have to look over the entire system. So we've looked at uh, the circular economy as an overarching strategy to approach waste management and uh, the elimination of waste. So we've been... Uh, joining others in a growing alliance that is really worldwide to promote the circular economy as a strategy to eliminate waste and, res and conserve resources. Uh, we think this is the best opportunity to reduce waste and, and provide a sustainable future. And, and you're going to hear from the other presenters today from the UK and from the Netherlands, and they're going to mention circular economy as well. It's uh, a growing conversation that's been happening in Europe. We've been following this quite closely. We're a little bit behind, but uh, we're certainly interested in it, and there is lots of action happening over in, uh, in Europe. And actually in Australia and, and Asia and elsewhere. So it's, it's something we we're paying attention to and we think it's a very important for us to solve that, that issue. Because we want to move from this linear economy that produces and we consume and then dispose waste all along the way to something that's more like this, that adds value and reduces waste throughout the system. And as you can see, there's a number of feedback loops in there. And it relates to the waste hierarchy, which I would assume that many of you are familiar with. So let's look at some of these, these loops, shall we? Because as I said, it's design where we can cut off a lot of the waste that we have at the end of the linear system. Yeah. So let's start with repair economy. We're all familiar with the iconic repairman who was so lonely because his products were, were, were so durable that he was never called upon to fix anything. And Well, not quite. The reality is that today a lot of those machines that we purchase are designed to fail. The components go on, one component goes, you can't repair it. It just needs to be replaced, and, and that's all part of the design for a linear system. When's the last time that uh, any of you went to a cobbler and had a shoe repaired? 
Yeah, yeah, I do that too, Spencer. I buy shoes that have soles and heels that you can do that. But many shoes today are produced for linear economy. They're one piece. The entire, once you wear off one part, it has to be thrown away. So it's, again, produce, consume, and dispose. Bicycles, on the other hand, right, Spencer? Are machines that can be repaired. I have four, and my oldest one is 40 years old. And the only thing that is original equipment on that machine is the frame. Everything else has been replaced over the years. And this repair economy, it not only does it give us an opportunity to reduce waste, but it also creates local economic opportunities. So let's go to the next layer here. So resell and reuse. We've all gone to a thrift store. How many people here have bought something from eBay? Yeah, see? eBay, SurreyReuses.com, that is a uh, partnership between uh, the Recycling Council of British Columbia and the uh, City of Surrey. So there's lots of opportunities for resale, and uh, that is all part of the uh, circular economy, and it adds to the local economy. We could even uh, come up with, <clears throat> we could even come up with um, some economic policy measures that would encourage resale. So for instance, there's 14% sales tax on a new item, why would there be 14% sales tax on a, on a reused item? We've already paid that sales tax once. So I don't know if anyone's here from the provincial government that could have any influence on that, but I would certainly like to pay less tax on something that I was, I was purchasing that had already had a tax paid on it. Remanufacturing, as we go down to the levels. When I started off my career at a Chrysler parts uh, department way back when in the last century, we used to uh, go to this place called Pacific Reman, and it was quite common to get remanufactured brake shoes, water pumps, carburetors, and today it seems that it's just heavy equipment that has some remanufacturing. You start off with a core, you replace all the components with either original manufactured components or those fabricated locally. But at any rate, whether it's locally fabricated or whether you rebuild the machine locally, again, it creates uh, local uh, e economic opportunities and it reduces waste. Now closely related to that is refurbishing. We have a local uh, British Columbia agency, British BC Technology for Learning. They have, a, uh, they have a counterpart in all the provinces across Canada. Take a look at those numbers there. 1.2 million computers repurposed since 1993. And look at all the, the numbers there that, uh, that are from that activity. Barrels of oil saved, uh, gas saved, uh, you know, the equality of the reduction of cars. I mean, it's just amazing. Now, you extrapolate that to all those other type of activities and in, in the other organizations involved in repurposing and, and even remanufacturing, and you've got quite an impact on, uh, on your carbon footprint and on your, on your waste system. And then we have recycling. And recycling has many layers to it, but I'll just focus on this particular layer. Uh, these are the 16 stewardship agencies that make up the uh, stewardship agencies of BC. They're the most consumer facing. And uh, they are uh, the groups that, of course, take back the products that are regulated under the recycling regulation. But one of the things that we need to address, and they do a good job and they collect a lot of material, but one of the things that we have to address through this type of legislation, of course, is how do we get the waste reduction to happen at the beginning of the pipe? And again, I bring it back to the whole design for environment. And part of that should be designing for the least amount of residual at the end of the product life cycle. But when you get there, what waste you have should go into as technical feedstock into new products. And we do have some examples of that in British Columbia. So in BC, we have this product called Stompstone. And Tire Stewardship BC comes up with a crumb rubber and other EPR programs have the plastics. They combine those. And at the end of the day, you have a product called Stompstone that replaces cement tiles for patios. It's produced in, on Anasis Island, it's sold throughout North America. And at the end of the day, this product can be ground down and then remanufactured into the exact same product. So it's a closed loop product 
in a linear, or rather in a circular economy, and uh, avoids that produce, consume, dispose linear system. And then finally we have the biological nutrients. And of course we're looking at a, an organic span in Metro Vancouver. And we have a lot of, we have a lot of uh, different options. We have uh, composting, we have uh, biogas such as Surrey is producing. And then we have niche markets like this. Now, Frugi Beef is a company in Langley. Uh, Dwayne Loudermilk, that's him there. Some of you may remember that name. He used to play hockey in the NHL. Uh, what he does is he has his cattle. He feeds them vegetables and fruit. And so that's all they're fed. Uh, it's a specialty product. And so really what you're getting is from the table to the stable and back to your table and what's more circular than that. So, there's your overview of what we're looking at in the British Columbia in ways that we can uh, reduce the amount of waste with uh, a strategy that follows the circular economy. So I, I hope that uh, that's given you a few ideas to talk about. I look forward to the rest of the conversation today and I'll hand it back over to Peter. So thanks very much for your time.